Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I am Stephanie from deliberatelycreative.blogspot.com. This is going to be a real-time lesson. We're going to get started pretty quick. I want to go over the materials we're going to use real fast. The first things we're going to be doing, we will, we will be using colored pencils. This is a jar of um, Prismacolor color pencils. I have Faber-Castell colored pencils. They're the uh, polychromos. So the Prismacolors are wax-based and the polychromos are an oil-based. The oil-based pencils work really well for giving this real translucent look. And the wax-based pencils work really well at giving this opaque white type look. I think what I want to do to start off with is make a doodle that has some real green colors. I want to do a green gem. So I may not use all of these colors, but I'm starting off with, in my hand, the uh, emerald green uh, 165, dark phthalo green 264, earth green yellowish, and that's 168, light green 171 and cream 102 and I will also be using a white Prismacolor 938 so fun stuff I like to start by putting in lightest of my color and I color in using light circular motion. You can always put more color down. And in fact, we will be layering a lot of this color. I'm leaving a, a rather large spot right here. It's going to shrink a little bit, but that will probably be with the cream. And now I'm just going to lay in about halfway up with my light color. Again, I am not pressing hard. I am let, letting the pencil connect with the tooth of the paper. Let's see, yep, you can see that. Right now, I'm not so worried about getting a smooth blend down on the paper. There can be a little bit of the white tooth showing right now. That's okay. So now I'm going to take my next darker color and I'm going to overlap into the first area here and I'm going to start putting in some darker tones and I'm just again doing my little scribbly circular motions. I'm not pressing hard. The paper is grabbing it. This is different that this paper takes the colored pencil differently. I am going to work it down the edge just a little bit. These edges here are going to be darker just because it's set in this kind of bezel and the bezel comes up around the edge just slightly. So the stone will be darker as you go down towards that. And I'm just going to bring that all the way around just, just ever so slightly. I am not worried if I get pen or pencil outside of my lines. I'm going to be coloring those in with gray. I'm going to grab my, let's see, which one? Dark Thalo or the Emerald? Hmm, Emerald is lighter. It's a little more yellowy, so I think that it goes better. The Thalo is more of a blue-green. And I may put some of that in there too. This is kind of bluey green too but it has a little bit more of a yellow tone to it. I'm going to bring some of that down in here again. And if you notice, I am not being a slave to coloring in 
perfectly. I actually like it when my stones have um, a little more dimension, a little more shape to them. So it sort of comes out and goes around and comes around and goes in and comes back out. It's just, this is an imaginary stone. I've not seen this stone. I don't know if it exists in real life. Maybe I'm doing it from a memory that I had seen of a stone. But uh, it's kind of fun. Get in here and do this. All right. I am going to go ahead and set those pencils down for a moment. Grab my cream. I'm going to work a little bit into my circle of white because this cream is really light, but it's a little bit bright too. And now I'm going to work this cream out and it's going to be my first unifying color. It's going to be the first color that I've got going over the whole thing to sort of pull these colors together, starting to fill in some of that tooth. and give my clear, oh, I also am going to be using a clear blender pencil. Uh, this happens to be a Lyra, Lyra Rembrandt Splendor. I've had it for years. I do not know if they still make these. Um, this is the 60200. I would imagine they still make them. I haven't gone looking for them yet because I haven't needed to. I have a couple in my stash. All right. Now, I think I want to grab my dark, dark green again. And I'm going to just do some little kind of just a zet, just sort of a little ziggy zag. And maybe along this darker line that I already have here, I think I'm going to put a little ziggy connect in. And maybe another one over there. These are just like little veins, little um, inclusions, spots that are inside the stone. So when we color over it, they sort of blend out a little bit, go deeper into the stone. I'm pushing it back. That's how I like to say. I'm pushing that color back. I have found that these are so addictive and it's so fun to go looking online for more pictures of um, polished stones to try out. Once you get the basic, you lay down a light ring, you take it up about halfway, you lay in your next color overlapping and going up to about a third of the way from the top you put your darkest color in and then you start unifying those colors with a light color. Now I'm going to take my dark indigo because I really like this pencil for doing my deep shadows down like right in here along the bezel. I like to put a little bit of a darker shadow and I like to pull it up just a little bit in a couple spots. What that does is it gives it another place that it can have some dimension. It gives it another place to show this is not perfect. It is not the perfect smooth, unblemished stone. This is a beautiful stone that has some blemishes and some inclusions in it. and things that make it special. And now, look at that. Doesn't that look special? And now, my white pencil is going to, oh, well, my white pencil had a little bit of a color. Well, that is okay. Because, you know, that just makes it look like the stone has a little more dimension. Just a little spot, no big deal. I'm gonna take this up 
And this is not my brightest highlight. My, well, right here is my brightest pencil highlight. And that is where the light is coming out. So I'm going to have a highlight up here that's almost, it has to be in a straight line from the center dot um, for the brightest part of the highlight. This pencil is just hitting some of those other places where light is bouncing off of it, but not perfect bright highlight. To do the brightest highlight, I will be using my Signo Uniball Signo Pen. It is UM153. This is made by the Mitsubishi Pencil Company in Japan. And I found this as a three pack for about $6 on Amazon. And now, going up from here, so my brightest highlight is going to be right about here. And then I'm going to take just putting a broken line and see where this goes in and it's dark. That means that this part up here is actually higher and it can grab a highlight. Oh, I like that. That turned out really well. Okay, so now that ink is wet and it will, it takes a minute or two to dry. You don't want to smear your hand through it. I think I'm going to go ahead and we can do one more of these stones. Maybe I won't talk quite so much. Maybe I will. I can't promise me not talking. That's, that's just not, not the way of my world. Well, I really do like making orange ones. Orange ones are a lot of fun. Get the orange pencils going here. And when I do the orange, I do like to have a red. And I'm still going to use my cream. And the indigo will still be my shadow. So I have the indigo, the cream, I'm going to be adding to my list of pencils the Cadmium Orange 111, the Dark Chrome Yellow 109, Geranium Lake 121, and ca Dark Cadmium Orange 115. And again, I don't know that I'm going to use every one of these colors, but it makes me happy to have a variety to choose from. I am going to put them sort of in my hand in the order that I would be using them, starting from the light. Now, because this one has the light highlight hitting right here and that white spot down there or up there, I'm going to make sure that my white spot is somewhere in this general area, the brightest place where the light is coming through, right about there.
Okay, so we've got the orange and yellow one done here, and we've got this real pretty green and uh, yellows done. And now I am almost certain somebody's going to say, yeah, you can make it with the, you can make those look really pretty with the Prismacolor pencils and your Polychromo pencils because those are expensive pencils. And they are, they are. I'm going to say, let's try the Crayola. I have a 50 pack of these. I, and we are going to test out doing one of these gems using these pencils. The uh, Pale Rose, the Marine Navy Blue, the Magenta. I've got the uh, Orchid and Violet. Let's see, what other color? Maybe more of a actual pinky pink or yeah, pinky pink. We want a, a, a reddish pink. And they do have a white. And they do have a cream. But I don't think I'm going to use a cream with this one. This is called sand. I don't think I'm going to use that with this particular one. Because I want the color to stay purple and pink. I don't want it to go off. So we are going to try this out with these colors. See what we get. See what type of a blend we can get here. Hey, look at those. And that is just as pretty as the ones that were made with the polychromo. This is the Crayola color pencil one. And these two are polychromos. And I did not even use the Lyra Splendor on this. This one was completely Crayola color pencils. That is exciting.
All right, so here we are. I have laid in a little bit of a drop shadow, nothing extravagant, nothing hard, just sort of doing a little outlining and a little widening of my shadow. If you enjoyed this, I would really appreciate it if you would click like. Go ahead and subscribe so that you can find out when I do more videos. Share this with your friends and get out and do something creative.